Let's do tracing while loops worksheet number one. I'm going to uh, do this exercise, but I'm not going to use the numbers that you have to use when you do homework. I'm going to cross these numbers out and pretend that the user inputs the numbers 5, 3, and uh, negative 1. Let's start. The program uh, begins with these two declaration statements. Number is initialized to 1 and sum is initialized to 0. Then we get to this while loop. We check the control expression. Since number is greater than 0, we do go through the loop. We hit the CN statement and we've agreed upon the fact that a, a 5 is inputted first into the variable number. So the 5 replaces the 1 that was there. That 1 never really got used, by the way. And we uh, get to, to this uh, important statement here, an assignment statement, which always works from right to left. We have to find the value of sum, which is currently 0. So uh, there's a 0 there. Number is currently 5. We do the addition, 0 plus 5. Um, and that grand total 5 gets assigned into the variable sum, because it works from right to left. And therefore, the 5 overwrites the 0 that was in sum. So we have a 5 there right now. We reach this curly race, which loops us back up to the top of the loop. We check the control expression. Since 5 is greater than 0, we go through the loop again. This time, that, uh, uh, as we go through the loop, the CN statement pulls in the 3, because the 5 has already been used. The 3 gets plugged in there for the variable number. So we have to overwrite this 5 with a 3. We reach the assignment statement, which uh, we always work from right to left. So sum, which is currently 5, uh, gets added to the variable number, which is 3. 5 plus 3 is 8, and that 8 assigns into the variable sum. So we cross this out and put an 8 there. We go back up to the top of the while loop. 3 is greater than 0. So we see in again, we, uh, this time, the number that's inputted by the user is negative 1. So this negative 1 plugs in for number. And we reach this statement, sum plus number, 8 plus negative 1 is uh, 7. So a 7 goes into sum, crossing out that 8 with a 7. We go back up to the top of the while loop. We check to see if a number is greater than 0. It's not. Negative 1 is not greater than 0. So we have a false. And because of this false, we do not go through the loop again. Instead, we execute the rest of the program. And that's simply to see out sum. And sum is currently 7, so that's what it displays. Uh, even though it doesn't say it in the instructions, if you did watch this video um, and then do the worksheet like you were supposed to, I would like you to circle the, the final value that you have for each variables that you, uh, that you do. In fact, do that for all worksheets like this as you take this course. Okay, so that's exercise one, although you're going to have to redo the exercise because you must use 4, 1, 6, and negative 1 instead of the numbers I made up. Hey, let's take a look at the next exercise that's below this on the same worksheet. Here we have an interesting situation because we have a while loop that has an if statement and a break within the if statement. I'm going to do this exercise but again with uh, different numbers and I'm going to make it quick here. Let's just pretend that the numbers 4, 3, and negative 1 are used instead of all those. Let's begin. Number is 0, sum evens is 0, and uh, the control expression is true because 0 is less than 15. Uh, the CN number tells us to put a 4, a 4 in there for number, so cross out that 0. We hit this if statement, if number equals negative 1. Uh, 4 is not equal to negative 1. So this is false, which means we don't do this. And let's look at the else if. Is this true or not? Is 4 remainder 2 equal to 0. Uh, when 4 is divided by 2, the remainder is not, uh, uh, no, it is 0. The remainder is 0, so this is true. So we do execute this <coughs> assignment statement. We take number, 
which is currently 4, and we add it into some evens. So uh, that sum evens is now 4. We're finished with the if else if. We reach this curly brace here, which lines up with and matches up with the while loop. Sum evens is still less than 15. So we go through this loop again. This time, we see in number, which let's uh, agree that the 4 has been used up and the user inputs a 3. So 3 is now found in number. Is 3 equal to negative 1? No, it's not, so we don't do that. Is the remainder of 3 divided by 2, is the remainder of this going to be 0? No, the remainder is going to be 1. So this is false. So we don't do that. In fact, we did nothing. The if, else, if just led to nothing. We uh, reach this curly brace. We loop back up to the top. Sum evens is still less than 15. It's still 4. So we uh, go through the loop again. I think this is going to be the last time through the loop. Let's check it out. This time, let's agree on the fact that the negative 1 gets inputted into the variable number. So cross that 3 out, make it a negative 1. And is negative 1 equal to negative 1? Yes, it is. Because this is true, we do execute the body of this if statement. And the break, what does the break do? A break tells you to exit the loop that you're currently in. We do not execute any code that's below this. We just immediately go to the rest of the program, which is down here, outside of the loop, and that's it. Uh, all that's left to do is to see out sum evens. Sum evens is currently 4, so uh, for the worksheet, I would put a 4 there. However, do note that this is not the answer on the worksheet because you must redo this exercise using all of these numbers. Trust me that eventually you will hit the break statement, which breaks you out of the loop. And even if the break doesn't break you out of the loop, eventually some evens less than 15 will probably end up being false. In fact, maybe it's false before you reach the break. Uh, you'll have to trace it to find out.